name is Robin Cuffey. I'm the owner-operator of Photo Finish Farm in Buxton, Maine. I've been carriage driving for at least 20 years, and I'm the co-author of The Essential Guide to Carriage Driving. I found in my experience that many people get involved in carriage driving accidentally, which is literally how I got involved. I got my first standard bread and thought I have an instant driving horse, so what is there to know about carriage driving? Well, <laughs> 20 years later, I realized there's a lot to know about carriage driving. And one of the main things is what to start out with for equipment. Carriage driving can be a very expensive sport because you do have harness involved, you do have an additional cost of the carriage, so you have two things to purchase. It doesn't have to be expensive, but it needs, again, to be very safe. I became more and more interested in the equipment aspect of carriage driving as more and more of my friends would ask me, what should they buy, how should they begin? They'd find great bargains on eBay and didn't know whether to buy them. They'd find harnesses in their barn and don't know if all the pieces were there. It began, I began to get more and more worried that people were going to begin to be hurt not knowing what they needed and what to, what to do with their harnesses. So I began doing a test, test driving harnesses and carriages and combinations to find the safe combinations and affordable combinations for my friends and my, and my students. This harness has a sewn-in trace. The trace is sewn right onto the breast collar. So this, this does not have the adjustments that the buckle-in trace has. This harness does not have a rigid tree. This is called the saddle, this part that goes on the middle of their back. And this saddle doesn't have any rigid form inside. So that means that this is gonna lay right on the horse's back and that's gonna be a consideration when you think of the weight that's in the shafts of the carriage when you attach it to the harness. One of the advantages of the small cart is that it is easy to, to hook on by yourself. Not that we recommend hooking by yourself, but if this is your situation at home, it's easily maneuverable to get onto your horse. This harness is a lightweight leather harness. This is again Amish made. This is the lightest weight leather harness that, that I would recommend. It's narrower strapping, less, less strapping to make adjustments. It's perfectly acceptable, for, especially for a carriage of this weight, because this is a very lightweight carriage. So this is a perfectly good match of function to function here. This is strong enough for this carriage and this carriage is not too heavy for this harness. The saddle, does not have a rigid treves, and this cart has very little weight on the shafts on the horse's back, so this would be acceptable combination. When the rider, the driver gets into the seat of the carriage, it also relieves some of the pressure on the shaft, so there's really very little weight, if any, on this horse's back. This horse in particular is an old Arabian, and this is a very good combination for him because he doesn't need to work hard. He's already done that. So this is a good way for an older horse to be still functional and useful and also get a little exercise um, without being overworked. This piece of harness in the back here is called a breeching. And some harnesses come without breeching. They're assuming that you're a very lightweight carriage doesn't need this, is, this piece of harness, but this is literally your braking system. This keeps the carriage from running into the back of your horse's feet. So we recommend buying a harness with breeching regardless of the weight of your carriage. It just gives you that added security and knowing that you'll never have a problem with the cart hitting the horse. When doing my research on harnesses, what we, I did find was that a number of harnesses, this trace, the strap right here, was not long enough to attach to the, the cart. A simple solution for that is a tr what we call a trace extender. And this literally would hook on to the trace as an additional piece, and then that piece would hook onto the carriage. So that would make this, this harness acceptable for this cart with a simple addition of this one piece. The springiest ride for one person. So one small person in this cart makes it a, a bouncier ride. This cart with two people is a very comfortable ride, so you would like to factor that in when you're deciding on what type of carriage you want for you and your use.
Without the adjustable seat, this cart has more weight in the shaft, so the horse's back is holding more weight in the saddle. For harnessing, my helper is Deb Dubois and my horse is Soprano. And we're going to show you how to harness a light pleasure horse. The light pleasure horse harness, basically we're going to start from the saddle, which is a piece that goes right behind there, withers. I'm going to put this on just the way it is and show how to adjust it as I go. We want the saddle to be right behind the base of the withers. So it's going to stay a little bit into the, the lower part of the back. And we're just going to tighten that by the girth. And you see already this harness is a little bit too adjusted for a smaller horse. So I'm going to tighten it just to get it attached to her. And then I'm going to go around and let the other side out. This other piece, this strap that hangs down here from the saddle, this is the tug, what we call the tug, or the shaft holder. And this is the over girth. And I'm going to leave this just loose right now while I do the other adjustments, and I'm going to come back and readjust everything to be my final fit. We want this all to reach back easily to her tail. You need a horse that has, is good about you pulling up their tail because this piece called the crupper needs to go right underneath her tail. So you have to be sure you have a horse that's not going to kick you when you do that. And you want to be sure you get every hair out from underneath that crupper so it's not going to irritate them and cause them to try to rub or kick at it as you're driving. I'm going to adjust it so it's just a little bit snug, not enough to pull her tail upward and not enough to pull the saddle backward. The bridging, this is your braking system here that attaches eventually to the shafts of the carriage. This wants to be in the mid part of the big fleshy part of her, her, her rear end here, her haunches, because this is literally what she pushes against, this part of her body pushes against this strap. This is a little high. You don't want it so high that it could slide up underneath the tail. And you don't want it so low that it could push against their legs and actually push them off balance. So I'm going to actually lower this one, at least a hole on each side, and then we'll take a look at it and see if we like the adjustment or not. So I'm going to do, try to match it on both sides. So I'm still looking for it to be right at the base, it's at the middle part of that big fleshy part of her, her haunches here. Okay, so now we're getting a little more into the middle right here. This I'm thinking I could take up. Some, some harnesses don't have too many adjustments here on the crupper, but this one happens to have a few more, so I'm going to take that up just so it's flat. The perfect fit on a harness would be that this D-ring here on the britching fits, reaches right to her flank area.